So I only was going to cover IBM for three weeks. But that was enough to go to IBM and have lunch with them. And they told me about this new project they had. They were building this machine that was going to play Jeopardy against humans. And it was going to have a nationally televised match against the greatest Jeopardy player in history, Ken Jennings. It was going to be a man versus machine showdown. A lot of people, when they, when they hear about a machine like Watson that answers questions, they think that the answers are in the machine. And it's just a question of finding answers, almost like matching answers with questions. If that were the case, it would be a useless machine. Because the humans, if humans are smart enough to give it answers, you don't need a machine to produce the answers. You can, the humans can do that. What you want is a machine that can come up with answers that no human knows. That's the future, and that's the exciting part of a machine of artificial intelligence. It's not just coming up with helping people find answers that humans already know about. So Watson, in the beginning, is utterly ignorant. It knows nothing. But sometimes the things that we think we know about, we don't really know. And that's why we make a lot of stupid mistakes. Watson is an absolute idiot, but it researches all these areas that we take for granted. And it makes up for its lack of common sense with massive computing power. But in doing that, it explores hypotheses that we don't consider because we already know that that's not right. And since it can read entire libraries it, and make connections that we wouldn't bother to make, it, in the future, in scientific research or even in marketing, can come up with hypotheses that are unlikely. And some of them will be idiotic, but some of them could be breakthroughs. What does that mean for, what does it mean for marketing that a machine like Watson, that technology like this is coming into the marketplace? Well, first of all, if you say, oh, it won at Jeopardy, but we don't do Jeopardy, so it's not meaningful to us. Wrong approach. If you look at Watson as a, as a grouping of, ver of a whole lot of technologies, those technologies can be taken apart and added to other ones that you already use. If you, you can imagine a machine that can understand, and I put that in quotes because it really doesn't understand in the way that we do, can make sense of human language and can go on hunts and make sense of millions of different documents, that could be added to analytics, uh, analytics programs that you already use or ones that you're going to be using in coming years. If you have a machine that understands English and can hunt in English and is tied to analytics programs, perhaps somebody can just describe the job to the machine and the machine can do a lot of that work in the realm of numbers and come back with a list of possibilities. As I say, some of them will be stupid, some will be out outlandish, but it will be something that increasingly will be used to come up with hypotheses. And I think it's going to be, um, and, and then the other thing is, it will learn from those, it will learn from its experiences which ones are useful, which ones aren't, and it will become ever more tuned to what the needs of the company are. And so I think in the future, you're gonna be working with machines like this and you're going to, um, they're going to be, allow you to consider many more, pop, more possibilities, run through thousands more scenarios, and accelerate your speed by, uh, you know, a factor of 10 or 100, or you're going to be able to do a whole lot more, much more quickly with these types of machines. And at the same time, these machines are going to replace people. So the, the key, in analyzing this technology is not to focus on what Watson can't do and how proud we are to, of being humans. It's to focus on what it can do and to, and to find out what we can do to work with these machines instead of getting, uh, having them take our jobs away.